that uh, this is working so smoothly and the sky is with us. You know, Gerard, uh, even uh, when you are facing the wonders of the sky, really the, the time is uh, never enough, you know, and uh, especially after so many weeks, uh, so many months of clouds. So <laughs> when you have a clear night, you would like to find, uh, to, to use it as much as possible. And uh, the bad is that approaching the spring, uh, I mean the, the summer, uh, nights are shorter and shorter. So. If uh, it was a winter night, winter night that will be that was going to be very very long. Yes, you're right. You're right. The weather was really boring lately. So I think that we will be starting in five minutes because uh, my friends in uh, Northern Virginia uh, st have started the day event and uh, I, I'm just uh, saying this uh, uh, to those uh, who joined uh, from home because uh, this event is uh, a special one arranged with uh, my friends in Northern Virginia but they kindly offered the possibility to open it to the public so this is why other friends are jumping into this but we will be starting in a few minutes friends So I see that uh, at your side the weather is still bad, Gerard. But uh, I really think that the spring should start. It is uh, time for spring to do something good for us after all. So uh, I see Phil, uh, just tell me when uh, the audio video is uh, shared with uh, your friends and then I will start. Just let me know when you're ready and I will officially start this live uh, transatlantic uh, observing uh, event. So just tell me and uh, I will go. Very good, Phil. So we are really going to start this right now. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gianluca Massi speaking from Virtual Telescope Project Italy and uh, I'm so happy and I must say very excited for tonight's event, uh, and, uh, which is a very special one and I would like just to, 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 to tell you a few words before starting this cosmic journey through the Virtual Telescope. Uh, I want to say why we are here and uh, for this I wish to thank uh, David who wrote to me several weeks ago uh, proposing this event for the friends of the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club and uh, later also Phil uh, cooperated with me to arrange things and I really like the idea because the Virtual Telescope project uh, started a few years ago by uh, myself uh, really wants to bring astronomy everywhere possible uh, thanks to the internet technology because uh, this way you can see uh, what is up in the sky, in the Italian sky, uh, everywhere in the world, even during your daytime or your cloudy time. Anyway, I wanted to use the internet for sharing the beauty of the cosmos. And uh, when David, uh, earlier and later also Phil, asked me to arrange something, I was very happy to cooperate and uh, I'm also more happy that the sky is clear because I must say that uh, this spring so far has been very cloudy over Italy and uh, this has been very disappointing because uh, we had many events scheduled for April but so far we did uh, just a very few things 
and your event, I must say, is the one running under the best skies since the beginning of the year. So you are nice bringer of good weather. So we have to cooperate more often and more stronger. Anyway, um, we are going to look at uh, something beautiful. I mean, every time you look uh, somewhere in, uh, in the sky, you, you find something beautiful. But um, I must admit that the spring sky, at least uh, for the northern spring, is uh, a portion of the sky that I really love because uh, you can go very, very far away with your own eyes, also thanks to a telescope and in this case to uh, this uh, technology bringing uh, very distant cosmic objects directly to you. And uh, the virtual telescope is uh, quite easy to use and uh, it can be used uh, by individuals everywhere in, on this planet because uh, we uh, mainly do this kind of events, I mean uh, just broadcasting uh, in real time the images from the telescope with our comment, but uh, people and individuals can use the telescope for themselves if they want for their own needs and so on. I, I must say that the virtual telescope is uh, surviving uh, mainly because of volunteer effort because we really don't have any uh, institutional uh, support and uh, so on. So uh, in principle, uh, uh, this is a fully uh, volunteer effort and from time to time people support us by donations and we love to put all this in the project and in about uh, seven years we have been able to reach about two millions of individuals from more than 200 countries on this planet and assuming as I say that this is basically a private personal love for this project I feel very happy for the results but we are here to enjoy the cosmos and uh, if you will want to learn more about the virtual telescope you are invited to surf our website www.virtualtelescope.com EU and there you will find also details about the telescope we are going to use. But I really prefer to use the telescope to show the sky and the universe. And here I would like to introduce uh, uh, what is going on and what you will see. Because you see that uh, there is uh, my face in the video window but on the bottom you also have an image which is auto refreshing quite often and uh, every time a new image is available on the web it is of course shared on the website well the bottom window is where you will see the astronomical images i managed to make that window uh, very important because from and through that window I can share with you several things like the star map showing where the object we are observing is located and also the true astronomical image and uh, just to underline that all this is true you can see that something is already happening at the scope even if you have a very white image now but I was just doing something uh, for our own activities because uh, as I said the, um, as I said, the, the audio, uh, sorry, I was just reading the chat, the audio is going fine. If uh, someone has problems, I suggest to check at their sides. And I was saying we were doing just uh, some uh, uh, personal uh, research here while waiting for the public event because, as I say, the sky was finally good after a very long time. But I'm just going to stop my personal tasks and uh, I would like to just show you what is up in the sky in this moment in Italy. So this is, uh, uh, I would say, a large portion of the sky over me. And uh, as you can see, there are very famous constellations of the season like uh, Lion, like the Maiden, like Hercules and so on. And um, I just want to have you uh, understanding some things in the star map, for example, where you see the yellow circle with a dot in the center, that is where the telescope is pointing, just to give you an idea uh, about where we are anytime, every time during the live uh, feed, you know. And uh, I will uh, show you several things because, as I said, the sky of the season is uh, very rich of great things. 
and uh, of course and of course um, I want to show you some of the best sides of the spring skies and uh, looking at this and uh, because we are already close to Lion I would like to show you a very nice galaxy in uh, Lion where people discovered the supernova about one month ago and that is Messier 75 so I'm just going to to make an uh, enlargement of uh, that portion so that we can understand better what is going to happen and uh, you can see where the telescope is pointing now I just uh, I would like just to to increase a bit if you don't mind the frequency of images at your side let me see how does this works it should be working fine Starting everything, okay. So the next image we should show you uh, basically uh, the lion with the telescope pointing very close to one or of the of the feet <laughs> of the lion, and we are going to point Messier 75, which is uh, a bit north of the current position. So I'm going to click on the image. Here we are, and then I'm going to ask the telescope to move there. And uh, the telescope, of course, will do its job going there. When the, the yellow circle and the red one will be on the same place, it means that we reached our destination. So the telescope is now in the right place. There are some parameters you can enjoy. For example, on the bottom line, you can see that right now the telescope altitude is about 46 degrees and other things. Uh, they have, of course, uh, uh, clear uh, meaning for you trained to astronomy. And I'm so happy to speak to the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club because uh, my good friends, uh, David and Phil, really uh, with me wanted this night uh, uh, to share all these and uh, I also happy that uh, you can uh, enjoy some of these numbers from time to time just uh, adding realism I hope to the experience but the good thing is that the telescope now has a pointed Messier uh, 60, uh, 65 okay so after viewing the telescope after driving with our special car in the right place we need to take a picture so i'm going to switch from the telescope control to the camera control and you know that uh, these days uh, in order to have uh, uh, very good images we are using uh, uh, digital devices uh, able to capture even very very faint light from those distant cosmic objects. Uh, these days we are really using uh, digital imaging everywhere, also on mobile phones, and they are very cheap now, but uh, the first to experiment and play with digital technology for imaging were astronomers uh, about 30-35 uh, years ago when, when the CCD device was invented and uh, it was a true revolution and uh, over the last 10 years the technology has been uh, developed further and now the digital cameras for astronomers uh, can be used and can be uh, even uh, found in a, in a reasonable price and they make possible to uh, amateur astronomers to do amazing uh, uh, work and images. Anyway, so we are ready to go to the camera. You can see that I already uh, changed my panel here and uh, of course I'm using this nice software. I must say that I really love uh, the, the Sky X uh, produced by Software Bisque. Software Bisque is one of our technological partner and all the hardware has been uh, uh, made by them. Anyway, I just want to, want to be sure that uh, we are pointing the galaxy, so I will take just a snapshot, a quick image. You can see some parameters here. I will take just a five seconds exposure. I will collect light from this galaxy from for five seconds, and then we will see if there is an idea, a hint for the galaxy, and uh, luckily also of the supernova. I just want to, to keep an eye here. 
okay and uh, let's take this uh, first picture here we are the system is taking the image now and uh, it is also now downloading and here we are I see that there is an image of the object the galaxy is clearly apparent even with such a very short exposure time I'm just trying to show this one a bit better for you just to add uh, some more degree levels so here it is please understand these are just five seconds of exposure and the galaxy is showing pretty pretty well and also there is a, as you can see the supernova and I will uh, make sure that you will see it even even better but uh, I still want to give you uh, just a few seconds more to enjoy this uh, very quick preview okay so we have uh, a good image and uh, I would like to take uh, a longer exposure let me take uh, 90 seconds of exposure and uh, 90 seconds are much more than the time you use it and let me start this sequence while waiting for uh, 90 seconds I will tell you something about this galaxy and about this supernova you know uh, Messier 65 uh, belongs to a very famous list of uh, fantastic objects the Messier catalog uh, containing a bit more than 100 objects and uh, they were uh, uh, mainly discovered by Charles Messier, a French astronomer working uh, during the 18th century, a comet hunter, and who finally decided to classify some, some false alarms, some uh, fuzzy objects uh, resembling the aspect of a comet seen through a telescope. And after spending and wasting a lot of hours for false alarms, Messier decided to classify and catalog the most, uh, uh, the brightest ones. And this is how the Messier catalog started to put it in a simple way. And other colleagues like Michel Alley himself discovered other things finally listed in the Messier catalog. And we have several galaxies there, and of course, they are bright because all the Messier objects were observed with, with the small telescopes about. Uh, I must say uh, 300 years ago more or less so they have the telescopes uh, smaller and smaller than the smallest telescope I think you have at home you know and uh, here it is uh, uh, 90 seconds images uh, coming uh, right now and uh, uh, about one month ago uh, when uh, a Japanese guy was looking at uh, this galaxy they he, he noticed that there was uh, an, another star which was not present on typical images and uh, that means that the galaxy the, 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 the star was uh, let me say new but when you find a new star in a galaxy like uh, Messier uh, 65 you know very likely that it is a dying star in that galaxy with a very strong uh, very energetic explosion uh, giving uh, the supernova uh, event and uh, in a short time the star increases its brightness of uh, billions of times and this way it can be seen despite the huge distance and uh, because of course this galaxy for example is uh, quite distant and um, I must say that I'm always amazed uh, to see how we can see very far away and this one is about uh, 35 millions of light years but you want to locate the supernova here and uh, I want to show you it to you of course and uh, let me just let me check a bit better okay and the supernova is uh, the star I just introduced uh, some red lines if you look the upper corner of the small red square in the center just locate the little star which is a bit on the left of the upper left corner and that is the supernova and uh, this is really amazing I just want to 
to make sure that it is now in the center of the screen just to help you locating it. And that is a dying star. I'm really, really impressed that in real time we can spy this. This is amazing. I really find this great, friends. Just want to give you a little chance to look at it better. And let me say that these are uh, all uh, raw images. Uh, they are not processed. The, so I'm even more impressed. And uh, let me just uh, put this uh, full screen so that you can enjoy all this at its full glory without the red stuff in the middle. So this is Messier 65 with the supernova uh, uh, 2013 AM. That is the official name of that bright star. So happy that uh, we have uh, such a star and we will see another one later. I can anticipate this to you even brighter than this, but starting with this, was a good thing. Uh, please look also on the bottom right of the image. There is a, a clear satellite trail and this is very, very interesting too, my friends. Very nice. You can see how the satellite uh, actually shared the light uh, uh, and uh, with some peaks and this is nice. There is also the clear evidence of a satellite. <laughs> All these uh, is happening all the time when you are observing. Not bad, not bad. I just want to try to save this for myself. Of course, all these images are going to be saved, so, but I really wanted to share and show this uh, satellite trail right away. Feel free to save. If you want to see a full resolution images, just click on the image you see on the website and the image will open in another window at full resolution, please. Please do this because the image you see at first glance on the website is uh, uh, significantly smaller. If you click, the better resolution will uh, show. I strongly suggest you to do this. Not bad at all, friends. Really not bad. I really like that uh, with the modern technology I can share with the, my friends uh, in the Virginia, my clear Italian sky in uh, just a question of seconds. This is just amazing. And all the other friends are joining live the chat uh, and uh, very nice. So we had a chance to spy this supernova and uh, just let me see if I can just increase a bit uh, the contrast. I just did too much. <laughs> I think that this is the best. Anyway, so Messier 65 showed uh, is a fresh supernova and uh, that is a type second supernova that is uh, a big mass star uh, dying after a very short life, uh, life, uh, life, and uh, after the explosion, of course, he, it will uh, spread around all the EV elements and very likely even carbon. And uh, maybe that sometime in the very distant future, some civilization can uh, start living on the ashes of this dying star. I really think that there are so deep and great uh, toads to be shared when looking at the beauty of these cosmic objects. So we're going to say goodbye to Messier 65. And uh, as uh, I, I still want to show you another thing because uh, this way here I can, uh, okay, this is a new image, I have to stop the sequence. So we had uh, five images and uh, I will process them uh, tomorrow and will share with my friends uh, in Virginia. But uh, I want to show you this thing 
because uh, here you can see a few more things. You can see where the telescope is, the why the yellow circle, of course, you know, and uh, there are other galaxies like Messier 66, and uh, there is also the NGC 3628, the so called trio triplet, you know, and uh, the purple rectangle is just giving the field of view of my telescope. And uh, maybe that uh, with some luck, I can just try to put all of Messier 66. Uh, and 65 uh, on uh, the same uh, on the same uh, frame I don't know let me see if I can do this maybe a bit more just to give you uh, a hint of both galaxies together Messier 66 is another nice very nice object let me just give you a 10 seconds because I just wanted to to see this together. Uh, dear friends in Virginia, the supernova uh, name is a, a cryptic, uh, at, at least at first glance, uh, designation. It is uh, the year 2013 and uh, two letters, HEM. So, this is supernova 2013 AM. And here you can see how Messier 65 is on the bottom and 66 is showing. Very nice. Let me see if I can just move this a bit. And uh, I just wanted to show uh, these two galaxies together. But time to move to enjoy even uh, better and uh, even uh, most uh, more beautiful things and uh, we just have to, cho to choose and uh, of course while we are still sitting I still want to stop my camera here okay uh, there was a radio signal to act news from the car well, the, um, the I, I should measure the distance. I, I don't know if uh, there is uh, such an uh, identification. And uh, I just want to see one thing about uh, this supernova, if you don't mind, at least to check if uh, the distance is, uh, uh, as you said. Well, this is about uh, two arc means south from the core of Messier 65. So I will check this. And uh, in case we we'll let you know, thank you for suggesting, by the way. And uh, I would like to leave uh, Lyon and uh, I would like to go to visit uh, uh, some uh, northern uh, stars and looking at the Big Dipper. And uh, you can see that the Big Dipper is uh, the bottom part of the screen. I would say the Big Bear is there. But I would like to show you Messier. 51, one of my favorite. So let's ask the system to go to visit Messier 51. Look at the new map. The yellow circle is saying where we are, Messier 6665, and the destination is marked by the red circles, that is Messier 51. And I welcome my friend from uh, Albuquerque, my good friend Bob as well. Welcome aboard. And uh, let's go to visit Messier 51. So the telescope is viewing right now. By the way, uh, in a couple of days, and you can check the website, we will have the Messier Marathon online, a full night to try to observe as much Messier object as possible, and all this as part of Global Astronomy Month. And this event is also part of Global Astronomy Month, this international celebration, uh, actually keeping alive the legacy of the International Year of Astronomy, organized worldwide by Astronomers Without Borders. A very interesting organization uh, that uh, I suggest you to check. And uh, in a few seconds, we reach uh, this new galaxy, and uh, let me see what is in the field of view. So I will leave again the control, uh, uh, the console controlling the telescope, and uh, I'm going to take again the control of the camera with uh, just five seconds of exposure. I'm pretty sure that uh, they will be enough 
to see if Messier 51 is there and this object is well known to all those involved in astronomy. This is really a masterpiece, a deep sky. The image is coming and I think that you can see something you recognize here. In a few seconds we have it. Just going to show it a bit better. Look also this, this is something I just want to share for technical reasons. I mean, uh, you can see how the, the core of the galaxy is in the very center of the field of view. This means that the telescope is really performing beautifully. I must say I'm very proud of the hardware we have here and also of the very careful fine tuning of everything. This is working this way without any human at the observing side because I'm not at the telescope now. The telescope is kilometers far from me and a thousand kilometers from, far from you, of course. So this is nice. This is a truly remote experience. Yes, yes, uh, uh, Phil, uh, and I'm very happy. I will start a longer exposure of this and then I will tell you more about it. So let me just uh, say here, just for security, six images. Let's start uh, a 90 seconds exposure of Messier 55, 51, sorry, and meanwhile I will tell you a bit more. We are using a telescope which has uh, 17 inches in diameter. It is a plane wave instrument. It is uh, a nice scope for imaging and research. And uh, attached to the telescope, there is a CCD camera from Santa Barbara Instruments Group. And this is a, a six megapixel sensor with a very nice uh, uh, sensi sensitivity, sensibility. And um, I must say that this is why in, uh, just uh, in an handful of seconds, you can see uh, so beautiful images. And um, all this thing, is uh, sitting on uh, our uh, equatorial mount. It is a paramount MA equatorial mount. We actually have two telescopes. Tonight we are using uh, the main one, the plane wave uh, 59 inches telescope, sitting on its paramount MA. And we have another telescope, which is uh, Celeston 14 inches with its own paramount MA. They can work uh, independently each other. Uh, two different users can handle them uh, independently. But I really wanted to share with you, I must say, the, the most powerful telescope. So we have basically a large scope with a sensitive camera, and this is why uh, images are coming uh, good this way. I'm always impressed because in a few seconds, you have something that in the photographic era uh, uh, forced you to work for hours to get the same signal, you know. The digital technology has really changed things. And let me say that this 90 seconds exposure of the galaxy is showing so well the structure. For now, I just will leave the very raw visualization. They are not processed. Trust me when I say that if you are impressed, like me, by the raw images, you can imagine what can happen as soon as you are going to process them. But I don't want to adjust now the brightness and contrast because I want to have you enjoying the overall shape of the galaxy where you can see very faint places well extending much more than the typical uh, spiral shape. You know, let me enlarge this a bit more because we can, uh, we can do we can shoot this uh, a bit uh, larger at 100% uh, of the original scale. And I'm impressed. And meanwhile, the telescope is taking other images. So in uh, about 20 seconds, we will have a new one. I will wait for the new one to adjust the brightness uh, very quickly to show the arms and some fine structures there. So this is nice. I'm always impressed to see how really this modern stuff can help us enjoying and discovering the beauty of those uh, gems. So let's try to adjust the contrast a bit, friends. 
Here it is. Look. Now, of course, you can read better the brightest parts, the brightest areas. And all this in a single image. Let me improve the background as well because it is way too white. And let me remove this red stuff, sorry, because I want to have the galaxy visible at its best. Look, just 90 seconds and you can see this glorious object here for you. I really like it and uh, Messier 51 is uh, just a monster in beauty, you know, so I was pretty sure but you know you have a big confidence with the sky and again we are looking as i said at about 35 millions of light years it just means for those not familiar with this language that the light i just captured in my time with my telescope and which i shared with you uh, actually started its journey 35 millions of years ago in other words what we are seeing today is not telling about the uh, actual situation, the real-time situation of the galaxy, because to see what is happening there while I am speaking to you, you have to wait for 35 millions of years in order to have that light living now, reaching us. So maybe that uh, another virtual telescope will be telling this to other friends of uh, the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club in 35 millions of years. Of course, <laughs> we will not be here. And uh, Miss C51 is always a wonderful gem. But it, there is a plenty of beauty there. Of course, please note how these are two galaxies together and uh, they are clearly interacting, uh, as you can see, because there is an arm from the main galaxy on the left, uh, I would say uh, turning uh, clockwise, and uh, from the upper, uh, creating a bridge reaching the other nucleus. So this is a, a wonderful pair of galaxies. And uh, in the, really, the uh, I would say, the emptiness of the cosmos, there is still a chance for galaxies to meet. This is just beautiful. But uh, I want to leave uh, again. Let me stop the telescope acquiring images. Just uh, let's wait for another image. I like to take more because let's, uh, let's uh, uh, imagine uh, we will find something unusual in an image, of course, and uh, it is important at that point that, uh, of course, you have more images to check what is wrong or not. Okay, let me stop this one. Here we are. And uh, let's uh, visit another galaxy. You just, uh, you can choose, of course. Uh, I really like the idea that uh, all this is happening in real time. And uh, Robert, this one is uh, 35 millions of light years. So quiet, a giant leap uh, back in time, you know. I see my good friends, uh, Luca, on the chat. And also Pierluca, welcome aboard, and the other friends, of course. And all this is happening thanks to a cooperation uh, between uh, the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club and uh, the Virtual Telescope Project. And uh, we wanted to share this event organized uh, in Virginia with uh, all the other people worldwide. And that was a good and uh, kind idea from uh, the v Northern Virginia Astronomy Club. And, uh, I want to go to visit something more and uh, we just can choose and uh, it is impressive how we can really have plenty of different destinations and for example I want to show you another intriguing galaxy, Messier 82. This is a well-known object as well and uh, it is uh, in the, say, in the same area, Messier 51, uh, 51 is uh, 
uh, actually not in the Big Bear constellation, you know, but in the Hunting Dogs, Canes Venatici. I love the Latin names, and I actually prefer to use the Latin names. So, after looking at the Whirlpool galaxy in the Canes Venatici, we are going to spy Messier 82 in the Ursa Major, the Big Bear, and let's ask the scope to go there for us. And this is starting, the yellow circle is moving to reach the red one, and uh, you know, say hello to Becky uh, Robert, happy that uh, she is with us and it's a pleasure. It's so great to have friends in the name of the stars, and this is uh, for me uh, such a big uh, rewarding thing, and I'm, I feel blessed for starting the virtual telescope because thanks to this system I've been able to meet uh, uh, so many friends uh, all around the globe and when you are friends in the stars that is the most beautiful thing and maybe that uh, we are of course uh, uh, affected by our love of the stars but I think that there is something real here. Anyway, we reach this galaxy and I want to check uh, if uh, something is in the field of view. Again, a very quick exposure, just five seconds. It is impressive to see how all this system is now working flawlessly. And uh, here it is, friends. You should recognize the shape of Messier 82. Five seconds, friends. I cannot uh, imagine the joy of uh, Messier if only he could have such a system for him. If uh, from time to time uh, the image is not loaded, just give uh, uh, the next uh, reloading uh, process uh, a chance to reload. The system is just working uh, automatically. <coughs> so just want to start a longer exposure. And this is an irregular galaxy, this is Messier 82, this is very well known, a wonderful beauty in the sky, and this is quite closer, this is just uh, at only uh, 12 million of light years, it is uh, three times, one third, I would say, of the distance of the previous one, you know. Just let me make the background a bit more white. Okay, so that you can enjoy this uh, preview a bit better. This is also a nice uh, source of radio waves. This is a very intriguing galaxy from a scientific point of view. And uh, of course, uh, the Messier objects are the most important ones. So uh, don't be uh, impressed to see them so deeply studied. They are bright. Generally, they are closer than average, so this is why we are spending a lot of time to investigate the Messier objects. And of course, they are beautiful. If you spend all your life looking hundreds of galaxies each night, you will never find two, two galaxies looking the same. In the, in the multitude of galaxies, there is still room for different beauty. This is, again, amazing, friends. Yes, yes, Gerard, this is the Seagar galaxy for its shape. I like that you also uh, underline and introduce these nicknames. And I like the, the idea that there are nicknames for these uh, cosmic creatures, you know. Here we are, friends. This is uh, 90 seconds. And please note how I am taking uh, these, uh, these exposures without guiding the system, because the system is a really amazing also tracking, so no need to track for minutes and minutes. Even 10 minutes uh, can be done of integration without any tracking need. So this is an image I like to share with you. Of this galaxy, Messier 82. Look at the resolution. We are blessed with a wonderful thing, I must say. So 
the atmosphere is very steady now and you can see very nice details in such a short 90 second exposure. For the record, let me check the temperature and uh, I will share the temperature with you. Like right now, the temperature is, is about 13 uh, Celsius degrees and uh, both the mirror, the primary mirror and the environment are at the same temperature within 0 0.2 Celsius degrees. So this is why the telescope is performing so well because uh, having those temperatures so close, it just means that there are no uh, heat movement uh, turbulence around the telescope and around the mirror. Of course, I opened the telescope uh, hours ago and just to give you an idea, look at this plot when we started, of course, how the, the temperature dropped over the hours. I just want to share with you also these technical things, just to add realism to the experience, you know. And then I want to show you again the Messier 82 image because I find it more beautiful than temperature plot. Here it is, the Seeger Galaxy. Enjoy. Just let me see if I can give you more evidence to the brightest core. Here it is for you. I really love it. This is a beautiful masterpiece. That plot, um, Phil, was uh, the temperature as uh, it evolved since I started the observatory. I just want to show you it back again. And uh, let me take it, here it is. And uh, the red and the yellow lines just give you uh, the primary mirror and uh, ambient temperature respectively. And you can see how it started at 24 Celsius degrees and now it is about half that value. And uh, you can see how the mirror and uh, the environment are now very close in temperature and this is good because uh, they, the, the, the telescope can perform at its best. You can see that uh, the mirror is just 0 0.1 Celsius degrees uh, uh, warmer than the environment, so just an internal equilibrium. Ah, I understand, sorry, sorry Phil. Maybe I understood. This one, this is the histogram, okay. This is showing how the brightness is distributed on the image and it is nice when you have to find uh, very quickly the um, brightness and contrast for your best visualization. And playing with the red, uh, and uh, green cursors, you can really change the appearance of uh, the image, you can see. This is nice. This is very nice. I'm, you are very welcome with the, the question because I love the interactivity because it is uh, so good for me to hear your curiosity and uh, possibly to answer. So, Messier 82 had a great moment uh, with us, you know. And uh, I still love its shape, irregular galaxy, as I say it, with plenty of stellar formation, starburst galaxy, how we call it. But uh, I know there is uh, a lot to see out there. And uh, of course, we can uh, spend more time uh, looking for galaxies, but there is something I want to show at this time. And I will not tell you what. I will wait for you to discover yourself. I'm going to ask the telescope to slew without uh, too much uh, words, but uh, I'm pretty sure you will understand where we are going. And of course, we are going to see something amazing, friends. Amazing, to say the least.
you're right, Gerald, the oldest part of the sky, the night sky. So I think that at this point, uh, this is not uh, no longer a surprise. How I can keep a surprise if my telescope is uh, pointing uh, that side of Hercules, of course. Uh, uh, there is a, there is a, um, a thermal uh, probe just uh, in contact with the mirror, and uh, of course there is a metallic plate just to give you a be filled of emotion with this fantastic object and uh, let me stop the sequence and let me take just uh, a two second exposure of this masterpiece Enjoy. Be filled of emotion with this fantastic object and uh, let me stop the sequence and let me take just uh, a two second exposure And one million stars and they are very old and they are not inside the spiral structure of the galaxy but they actually are living in the galactic halo embracing the wool structure This is uh, something I wanted to say. And look at this image after just two seconds of exposure. This is just amazing, breathtaking, friends. Let me see. Wow. How cannot see? Friends, tell me what you mean here. I really need your help to survive with, with such a great emotion. Look, friends, this is just beautiful. This is for you during this live event coming from uh, a connection between uh, uh, the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club and the Virtual Telescope Project, sharing the sky live and uh, all this is happening using the Italian stars and uh, pushing them on the web everywhere in the world. This is just fantastic, friends. This is just beautiful. Let me see if I can give you a better idea about the extension of the cluster. 
sacrificing a bit the bright core, but I still want to show you the full beauty of this one. Adjusting the histogram, now that we know that the strange plot on the bottom visible from time to time, and this is Messier, the Messier object I promised, Messier 13, and I want to do something now. I want to try to observe this one at full resolution using this time the full capability of the system. This is uh, something I wanted to say. And look at this image after just two seconds of exposure. This is just amazing, breathtaking, friends. Let me see. Wow. How can I see? I just would like to ask uh, Gerard and the other friends if they are receiving uh, the audio fine. I, uh, from my point of view, all is running good. Okay, you are faster than light, uh, uh, Phil, so <laughs> we should send uh, the message to Monsieur 13 with the, your technology. Look at these friends. Oh, this is fantastic. This is beautiful friends. Lucky guys, look at the very high resolution of this raw image. No processing here, but amazing sharp stars and amazing object. This is the full resolution. The virtual telescope, main telescope, the plane wave uh, 15 inches is just giving you an idea about the, its capabilities and look how we can really see everything up to the very center. This is amazing. I'm moving. I must say that I'm impressed. This is a raw image without carefully checking the focus because I trust the system because uh, I really, I really trust this amazing telescope. And for these needs, you can go without checking focus because the focus is uh, so stable night after night. Thanks to carbon fiber, you know, the different temperatures are not just giving you uh, problems with the, the optical tube. This is amazing, amazing. This is great. I believe that we are having one of the best views of this object. Outstanding, I agree. I really agree that this is amazing. Yes, yes, uh, Bob, uh, I want to say that uh, the, uh, the, the friends in Virginia uh, asked me to share this with the public, and that was great. Well, no, the histogram uh, uh, field is uh, just, uh, uh, I would say, a statistical vision of the bull image. I can give you an idea, better idea about what is happening. Let me show you the histogram for this, for example. And uh, let me see if I can, I can increase a bit. Look, this is uh, very nice to see. You can see that the histogram here has uh, plenty of stuff on the uh, left side. And the left side is uh, 
where the low luminosity, low brightness is. And this is not surprising because the astronomical image is dominated by the dark background. And the sky background, of course, is less brighter than the stars. So you have more background pixels than starry pixels. This is the meaning. This is why, of course, the, the histogram is more rich on the left dark side than on the upper side. But you can see, for example, uh, around the, the center of the histogram, there are some values, then they are stars. Uh, and you have also something on the very right on the saturation, because there are some bright stars approaching the saturation. So, and this is a very quick look of the histogram, because it is a very nice tool just for displaying uh, the image when you really want to do something in real time, like we are doing here. I'm happy to answer questions, so, because uh, they help me as well to, to understand better things, because we are all learning here, friends. This is a fantastic game. We are all students in the astronomy game, as I uh, used to say, and uh, Bob knows this very well. Then, I think that we had fun with the Messier, with this fantastic Messier 13. And I want to stop it, and I still want to show you another thing. Very different, very different stuff, but it is there, of course. And again, the Messier catalog, but this time, number 57. And I'm pretty sure that you know where we are going. Uh, so, Phil, um, just a quick question. Um, can I take 15 minutes or uh, you have other things planned and I don't want to go in conflict with them? If we, because I can easily, easily uh, adjust this. But just let me know, I don't want to, to uh, interfere with your plans. Good, so let's go. I, it is not a problem for me. I'm happy to share this. So once we are here, we can drive uh, reaching uh, the Andromeda galaxy in uh, two million years. So it's so great. So let's have uh, uh, 15 minutes. Thank you for uh, uh, just checking this uh, together, Phil. And the telescope is now uh, looking at uh, Lyra. You see the musical instrument. And uh, let me take a very quick exposure again. Just uh, four seconds, and let's see what will happen. And in an handful of seconds, we will have the clear evidence of uh, this uh, cosmic egg here. And uh, of course, this is not an egg, but it is uh, just an envelope of gas surrounding uh, a dying star, very similar in mass to the Sun. And uh, when looking at Messier 57, we are looking at a planetary nebula. And uh, luckily, we are seeing something that uh, our Sun will experiment in uh, 5 billion of years from today. And let me take a deeper image, another favorite. I agree with you, Bob. And uh, let me take. Uh, A 90 second exposure of it. This ring is fantastic. It's an amazing shape. Before understanding what these objects mean, you can have fun with their shape. I mean, the wonder, the beauty of the sky is that you can enjoy it at any level, even without any, any input, any uh, uh, knowledge of astrophysics, you can still have fun if you just uh, try to grasp what is out there, the distances, the times, the dimensions, or just the shapes, of course. Of course, if you add some details about the mechanisms making this object brightening and so on, this will add more fun. But this is not, of course, something you have to do anyway, because you can still enjoy the sky just enjoying the beauty without any knowledge of the physics 
lurking inside that beauty. Inside that beauty, I find this amazing. This is just fantastic, friends. And uh, let me see. Yes, we can see the central star going to be a white dwarf. This is exactly what uh, will happen to the sun 15 billion of years from now. Amazing, after all. I see that we have to adjust the histogram again. And look now at this beautiful thing. I want to, to zoom a bit so that you can see the central star. Now this is very beautiful. Isn't it, friends? Ninety seconds, rogue image, look. How delicate this uh, ring of gas is! Fantastic. This is just fantastic. Raw images. I really want to underline this. Amazing. How the beauty of the cosmos never fails, just uh, touching you. I really find all this amazing. This is superb. And uh, I would like to show you another thing if I, I can. Let me see if I can. Yes, so you can see that there is a galaxy. Just let me give the system a few more seconds. If you look at the nebula, and if you look at uh, our 11, you can see there is a, a small evidence for a galaxy, a very faint uh, spiral. And that is a galaxy which is visible on the same line of sight. That galaxy is about two millions of light years far away, friends. So this is just a very, very deep piece of space, while the Ring Nebula is just 1.5 thousands of light years. So there is a, a huge difference among them, you know. Yes, yes, of course, uh, uh, the system is uh, ready for uh, color imaging. You know, you can you have to take uh, uh, images with uh, in red, green, and blue filters. This can be done with our system. The telescope has also narrow band filters for oxygen and uh, for H alpha and uh, other stuff. But uh, uh, of course, as you know, this is a longer process. So for these uh, live uh, events, we prefer to go black and white so that you have the best uh, efficiency in gathering light and uh, even the uh, fastest uh, way to see and share things. But of course, you can take uh, color images without troubles at all. And uh, let me see. If uh, we can finish with something uh, special, let me see how, if I can do this. Let me try this. I will uh, go to, I'm going to finish with uh, a famous but uh, not obvious object. Okay, my telescope is uh, located at 42 degrees of northern latitude. So we are just uh, in the middle of uh, between the equator and the northern pole. And uh, 
this is um, a temperate zone and uh, I must say that uh, we usually have a very good sky, skies and good weather and good, uh, I would say, very good seeing, but this season so far has been very, very cloudy, as I said. Let me see if I can uh, give you okay, just an idea here. If you look here, you can see which filters uh, we have here. Yes, I, I checked this uh, field and, uh, earlier today and uh, saw that we are at the same latitude. The, pro the difference is in longitude, you know, making, as you say, the, this uh, very transatlantic uh, connection. I'm just going to put the H-alpha filter here. And uh, let me see if I can take just a um, 20-second image. This time asking the system to do a little calibration because this is a relatively faint object. And let's see what will happen here. It is, uh, oh sorry, I did uh, a mistake. Okay. Yes, I see that we are, anyway, the Gerald sharing almost the same place in latitude, so... <laughs> that was uh, nice to share these uh, details. I'm so happy that uh, everything went uh, so smoothly. Oh, sorry, I, I had to ask the telescope to take a game back the full, let me see if uh, we can see something or not. This is a quite critical uh, observation, as I said to you. Uh, my fault here. Okay, I want to put this big method there if you don't. Oh, here it is, friends. Look, why this is uh, largely, this is not perfect because it is a strong filter, but this is the Crescent Nebula in real time with just 20 seconds of exposure anyway. So I think that we can be happy with this. In any case, just let me see. Wonderful. Happy? Happy? Really happy. Oops. Here it is. Just let me put this one. Okay. This is uh, the so-called the Crescent Nebula NGC 6888. And this image was obtained uh, so quickly with the H alpha filter. And uh, this is a fantastic object. Of course, happy to see these greetings every time. But uh, I would like to end this one. Let me see if I can uh, still uh, give you... I want to finish in a great way. The grand finale, and the grand finale is uh, a surprise. And uh, in order to have a surprise, well, surprise, but you will understand. Let me ask the telescope to go there immediately. And the telescope is going to point uh, a great surprise now.
but you will understand very quickly where we are going. I'm pretty sure. The telescope is tracking. And let's take, let's uh, uh, remove the filter, go into unfiltered again. And let me take, let's say, five seconds of exposure of it. And you will recognize this immediately. Yes, the Messier Marathon is scheduled for uh, April uh, 15. The weather looks very good, so I'm confident that we will do the marathon this time. And uh, you are welcome to join, of course. It's, uh, the event uh, can uh, be uh, joined through the same page, the, our web TV on our website. And uh, you have uh, recognized very likely this uh, unidentified flying object. I like to call it this way because of the shape. Just uh, five seconds are enough to show this one. Yes, I, I will. I will. Um, I will share all the images uh, tomorrow, Gerald. So don't worry. I have saved all of them. This is, of course, a masterpiece in the Coma Berenice. This is NGC 4565. This is a spiral galaxy seen fully at John, and you can see also the clear signature of the dust in, uh, across the disk, actually covering the bright core, and this is uh, always a wonderful sight, I must say. And uh, very soon we will have the 90 second second image coming. <clears throat> Here we have the, the image, <coughs> sorry, well, this is another uh, old glory to use uh, Pierre Luca words. I must say that uh, I'm never tired or bored looking at this wonderful object. Look and tell me if this is not fantastic. <coughs> I love it. Look at the details. This is a truly fantastic night. Happy that uh, my friends in Virginia uh, were uh, so kind to bring uh, some uh, good uh, weather in Italy for their event. This is amazing, impressive, I must say. <clears throat> I would like just to to make the contrast a bit better. Love it. I think that uh, it was a, a good way to end uh, this journey, you know. And uh, Happy that uh, <coughs> Messier, uh, sorry, NGC 4565 showed uh, as usually at uh, its very best. Well, I must say that uh, these uh, 75 minutes uh, really went away so fast, and uh, it has been for me such a big pleasure to host uh, the event organized by my friends of uh, the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club and I wish uh, again to thank uh, David and Phil for working on this uh, at uh, the Northern Virginia uh, Club side and um, I was happy also that it was possible to extend the invitation to all those willing to have a look through the virtual telescope and uh, 
for me it has been uh, such a big pleasure to share again to the virtual telescope something I love and I think that when you love something it is almost impossible to keep to keep it only for you you want to share you want to just to try to contaminate people with what you like and uh, uh, the virtual telescope uh, did uh, uh, almost uh, uh, 600 events since uh, uh, he started operations about seven years ago and um, but anyway no matter those numbers I was so happy that uh, my friends in Virginia wanted uh, to run this uh, for their club and uh, still they wanted to share this with the world and uh, happy that uh, tonight we had such a great sky and uh, if uh, you have questions if you uh, we, have, we have still have uh, just um, a couple of minutes and uh, if you want, we can uh, really do this. And uh, meanwhile, I just ask in the telescope to to park because uh, after this, I have to stop operations as well. And uh, this is also nice to see. The temperature of the camera is uh, minus 28 degrees because CCD cameras work better when they are cooled. And I'm just going to uh, warm it uh, slowly. Thank you to you, my friends uh, in Virginia, and uh, it was a pleasure, and uh, David was uh, so kind to ask this uh, uh, weeks ago, and uh, happy that everything worked, and that the sky worked, of course, because uh, these weeks have been really terrible as for the weather. Gerard, Susie, Bob, and the other friends know this very well. And uh, I uh, wanted to invite you to join our Messier Marathon next, uh, next April uh, 17. So, anyway, thank you for joining. And uh, this is, uh, that's all from uh, Gianluca Masi, the Virtual Telescope Project in Italy. And uh, I always welcome you on our channel. And uh, I just wish to remind you that you, you can support and you can uh, uh, support the Virtual Telescope by donations and whatever you want, but mainly thanks to your friendship. And uh, thank you for making the Virtual Telescope such a nice project. And uh, thank you for making me even a better person through this project, thanks to your friendship and our so nice, great relationships worldwide. Thank you so much. and. Uh, uh, stay safe and always keep looking up because I always believe that if you look up carefully you will understand better a lot of things under the horizon on this planet. Don't leave the perception of this beautiful connection between you and the cosmos. Stay safe and uh, uh, take care of you and see you soon and uh, all the best from the virtual telescope. Goodbye in particular to my friends in uh, of uh, the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club, to uh, Bob, to Gerard, to Susie, to Luca and Pierluca and the other uh, friends uh, on the chat. Thank you again and keep in touch. That's all from Italy. Good night and have a nice evening.